All right, we're here at Rogers Arena for the NHL draft, and uh, Rob, sum up the Oilers draft for me. Well, they, they went into yesterday kind of really needing a forward, and they ended up with a defenseman, so <laughs> today they kind of covered their bases and they got a forward that they did not expect uh, was still going to be there at 38 in uh, Raphael Lavoie uh, from uh, Halifax Mooseheads. He's a guy, he put up 73 points in 62 games. He's 6'4", he can skate pretty well. Like all the reviews you hear about him are, are pretty glowing. So, I mean, they say it every time they pick a guy, I'm surprised he was still there, but I'm kind of surprised he was still there at 38. So he obviously has some flaws. That's why he was still there. But uh, I mean, you gotta be happy with what they came away with with the first two picks. Do you think there's a lot for the, I mean, we saw some trades today. Um, maybe there's some surprise that Subban went to the Devils for what he did. I know the Canucks obviously made a big trade. Are you surprised the Oilers weren't in on more on, the, on that end of it? Yeah, you, we saw Holland work on the floor a little bit. He had a yeah. long conversation with Doug Wilson, and then he went over to talk to Don Waddell. So, I mean, there's a few things he wants to do. He's a little bit handcuffed. There isn't a lot on that roster that, that other teams are going to want to trade for yeah. unless it's a core piece that the Oilers don't want to give up. So from that standpoint, he, he doesn't have a lot of movement, and they don't have a lot of salary space either. So it's he said when he took the job, it's going to be a, a slow process consisting of maybe a, la, a lot of smaller moves as opposed to one big move. But you never know. There could be something out there. He's a smart guy, and he has a lot of contact, so we'll have to see. This is just the first shoe to drop, obviously, as you reshape your NHL offseason. The draft is a big time for not just trades, but the players you get. But now we got free agency looming. What are you expecting from the Oilers now, seeing what they've taken out of the draft? You know, again, it's it's money, and they don't have a whole bunch of it. I mean, I think they'll try and look for some value guys, you know, second-line scoring wingers that you could get for... I mean, they're out of the running for the for the high-ticket guys, but if, you know, you can find, a, you know, somebody for a couple, two and a half, three million dollars who can get you 25 or 25 goals, that's... It's what they're starving for right now is is, is offense uh, to complement. You know, when you have two of the top four leading scorers in the NHL and you don't make the playoffs, it tells you something about your wingers. So they're going to have to search for two or three wingers that can kind of kick in some offensive help. And if you don't have a lot of money and you don't have a lot of assets to trade for them, it's going to be a tough proposition. But, you know, they'll they, you got to hope they'll find somebody. Now, got to finish up by asking you, since you're here in Vancouver, uh, leading into the draft, we heard all these supposed rumors about... Vancouver's dead term guy, Louis Erickson, for your <laughs> dead term yeah. guy with, with Milan Lucic. Is that dead in the water? Probably. I'd rather have the Lucic because at least he brings something. Yep. Like he's a hard guy to play against <laughs> and he makes sure that nobody kind of looks twice at some of Edmonton's skill players. So if I had to take a dead term guy, I would still take Lucic over Erickson. So all right. That's fun. great stuff, Rob. You can, you can read all Rob's stuff at uh, Edmonton Journal, Edmonton Sun. Um, lots of great stuff through the draft from all the Post Media writers. Uh, Videos, podcasts, stories, catch up on it here. We'll continue to work throughout the day on that. Thanks.